is an education, isn't there? We don't need entertainers and, and sports figures and, 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 and movie stars to go into our schools and tell our children how important education is when many of them didn't finish high school, didn't go to college, and some who went to college dropped out and then they put education down. Yet we bring in our entertainers to tell our children to stay in school. Or we offer them money for grades. Or we offer the parents the opportunity to win a car to stay in school. Or we offer parents the opportunity to win one month's mortgage payment to keep the children in school. Education has an intrinsic value. Why can't education stand alone? Tell them for me about Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. They disagreed on the type of education, but they never disagreed on the need for education. Tell them how Booker T. Washington walked 500 miles to go to Hampton Institute. Tell them for me that Martin Luther King Jr. loved. I have a dream, but he was an educated man with the Morehouse at 15. Got a degree from Crozier Theological Seminary and a PhD from Boston University. Tell them about Ida B. Wells, how she took five little girls and built a college on a dump. Tell them about Mary Chesterell. Tell them about Ida B. Wells and tell them about Nanny H. Burroughs. Tell them that education stands alone. Tell them that it was Malcolm X. They talk about him as a radical. It was Malcolm who said that education is a passport. Education has always made a difference, and that's what we say. So what is my message today about education to our children? I say to you, you say to them, long after Beyonce has lost her wit, long after Snoop Dogg has become an old dog, long after Oprah Winfrey has gotten married, and long after, minute, and long after Michael Jackson has become black again, and when 50 Cent becomes a nickel, that education will always be there because education is always number one on the chart. Education is always in gold. And learning is always in They tell me, I don't want to spend too much time, but they tell me, Tom Todd, you, 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 you just preach to the choir. You tell teachers what they want to hear. Yes, I'm guilty. I preach to the choir because I like music. And if you stop singing, the choir stops singing, and you stop teaching, there will be no music and no teaching, day in and day out. Oh, but let me fuss at you for a while. Let me just fuss at you for a while. If you believe education is important, you must show it. You're natural role models. When you stand in front of these children, what you wear, how you look, how you smell, what you say, influence these children. You can't have anybody respect you unless you respect yourselves. A meeting the other day, we went around the room. What do you do? I am a physicist. I am a lawyer. I am a doctor. And what do you do, young man? I am just a teacher. No, no, no. No, no, no. The influence that you have in this society is beyond what you can understand. It's just not going in day in and day out. I had a young woman in Flint, Michigan tell me, she said, tell me, I've got 22 pairs of pump shoes. I said, why don't you tell me about your wardrobe? She said, I wear pump shoes because my third grade teacher wore pump shoes. I had another young lady tell me that I am a teacher because of a teacher who taught me, even though my mother is a teacher. Listen to what I just said. That's how much influence you have. And so, if the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, then the people who teach the children control the world's destiny. All right. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. If you are a rocket scientist or a brain surgeon, long before you came what you are, some teacher touched your mind. Well, listen to me. If you don't, no one else will. If you don't go into these schools, no one else will go in to teach these children. Oh, I tell you over and over again as I go throughout this country, 
you have such influence, teach them multiculturalism, teach them diversity, but tell them it's more important, more important to respect the differences among us than to just recognize them. Whatever you want, black or white or Native American, Jewish, or whether you practice Islam, whatever you are, respect what you are and respect other people. Say, mine is no better than yours, but it's just as good. Tell the children for me, if you reject what you are, try to be what you are, and if what you want to be rejects you, you put in a psychological twilight zone, no good to what you are, no good to what you want to be. Teach these children to give back, not to be selfish. I don't care how smart you are in this room. I don't care how well you do on tests. <laughs> You didn't get here by yourself. You're standing on somebody else's shoulders, reaping the harvest of seeds planted by somebody else. Most of you wouldn't have eye water to cry with or a pot to cook in. <laughs> if it had not been for somebody else, somebody marched to get some of us here. Somebody cried to get some of us here. Somebody died to get some of us here. And so you must continue and teach the children to reach back and bring somebody else across. Reach down and bring somebody else up. Reach out and bring somebody else in. There are children who will come from broken homes, as I finish. There are children whose dreams will be broken. There are children who will have broken promises. Tell them it's not all right, but broken always is not always bad. Tell them you heard a song one day. The song sang, God uses broken things. Uses the broken soil to give us golden grain. Uses the broken clouds to give us rain. God uses broken things. Tell the children, oh, they've got to be broken. Let me be broken for you. You've got a way of taking broken things and making them just like new. Oh, I don't mind the pain. Just do what you've got to do. Just take me and break me and make me just like you. Oh, this is a great day. But day in and day out, you must continue to teach these children. If you don't, no one else will. Oh, I had several endings for this speech. I had several alternatives. I'm going to choose two. One of them, because it's an election year, one of them is Frederick Douglass. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. You may not get all that you pay for in this world, but you certainly will pay for all that you get. And once you pay, don't forget to count your change. <laughs> the second one, Carter G. Woodson wrote, it does not matter who is in power. Those who have not learned to provide for themselves and have to depend upon others get no more privileges and rights in the end than they had in the beginning. <laughs> 